and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So over the years, I've tried and tested many different methods of tracking aircraft through receiving and decoding ADS-B transmissions on 1090 megahertz. And if you are a follower of this channel, you would have seen some of my videos on what software and hardware is required to do so. So recently, AirNav reached out to me to see if I'd like to test the Radar Box X Range 2. And of course, I agreed as I love testing unique pieces of hardware relating to reception of radio waves. So what is the Radar Box X Range 2? Well, in short, it's an enhanced ADS-B receiver, which is completely standalone. There's no additional software or hardware required to set up. Of course, you still need an antenna tuned for ADS-B. And in this video, I'll be using an outdoor ADS-B antenna manufactured by AirNav, which I'll show you shortly. Well, the X-Range 2 has three connectors, one for power, one for Ethernet connection, which connects to your router, and one for the antenna. The box itself is made from plastic, but each of those ports are really easily accessible. Now, you may also notice there is a label there for an, an antenna 2. This will be utilized in a future version of this product, so it will also contain a VHF radio for listening to aircraft as well. But for this version we're looking at, we're just looking at ADS-B reception. Now, when you order one of these, it's advisable to create an account on the Radar Box website first. This is so that the support team at AirNav can link your X-Range 2 to your account before you receive it. Now, what this means is that when you receive your X-Range 2, all you need to do is simply plug a cable between your internet router and the X-Range 2 to be up and running without any software configuration. It's really that easy. So for this test, I have the X-Range 2 set up in my garden shed. And as you can see here, I have an ethernet connection going back to my indoors router, the power cable plugged in and the antenna connected to the antenna port. Now recently I've purchased a Wi-Fi ethernet bridge with a view to connecting this to the X-Range 2. So I do not have to run a long ethernet cable from indoors out to the shed. Now, if you want to keep up to date on how that experiment works, follow me on Twitter where I'll post my results. Now the antenna comes attached with around 30 feet of coax. So I was able to mount the antenna on a three meter pole, which is then attached to a bracket near the roof line of my shed, making the antenna height around six meters off the ground. Ideally though, this antenna should be mounted on top of the house. So it has a clear view, 360 degrees with no obstructions. This will obviously maximize your reception range from your location. Now, assuming that your X range two box has already been associated with your radar box account, you will receive two emails once you turn on the X range two. Now, of course, the ethernet connection must be connected and you must have an active internet connection. So the first email will congratulate you on connecting your ADSB feeder to the network and sharing your data. And the second email will be to inform you that your radar box account has been upgraded to a business account. So as long as you allow your received ADSB traffic to be shared to the AirNav network, you will automatically have the business account for free, no charge ever. So now you have everything connected, receive the confirmation emails. So how do you view your air traffic that's coming from your newly set up ADSB station? Well, if we refer back to the first email, you'll notice a station ID. Now combine this with a special URL, you're able to access your air traffic from anywhere in the world using an internet browser. Now the X-Range 2 does also offer local port connection, which supports Beast, RAW and SBS Modest data outputs, but we'll talk more about these shortly. So here we have the live view of the data coming from my X-Range 2. Each aircraft's position is updated in real time and you can see them moving across the map. Now on the left side of the screen, we can see some stats about my station. At the top left, we have the location, local time, MLAT stats and max range so far in nautical miles. Now below this, we have a breakdown of the type of messages that we've received covering ADSB and MLAT. And the bottom left, we can see that my station has been constantly online and receiving for the last seven days. Now, if we want to know more about a particular aircraft, we simply click on it and a slide tab will open on the left. Here we have information about its scheduled flight plan, 
a photo of the actual aircraft, and information relating to its current location, speed, and altitude. And one of the coolest features on this page is the cockpit view, which is accessed by clicking the cockpit view button on the bottom left. Now this is quite easily missed, but once clicked, you'll see another small window open to provide you with a simulated view from the cockpit. Now, how cool is that? Now on this map, you'll also notice cloud cover. This is real time cloud coverage, which can be manipulated using the buttons on the right hand side. From here, you can add even further map overlays for weather and wind, plus some other cool overlays, which I'll leave you to explore once you receive yours. Now there's also a filter tab, which allows you to filter what type of aircraft is shown on the display. For example, you may only be interested in military aircraft. For this, you can disable all of the other filters and just leave military enabled. You may also want to filter down to speed and altitude if you're only interested in specific aircraft. Now from the map, you can also roughly tell how well your ADS-B receiver and antenna installation is working. Now, if you notice the green colored overlay, which looks a little bit like a splat, this shows you what areas your station has received aircraft transmissions from. You can see from mine, I do not pick up particularly well in the southeast direction. Now, the reason for that is because southeast of my antenna, I have a row of houses, which are obviously blocking signals in that direction with a low angle, i.e. further away. Now, to rectify this, and as mentioned earlier, I could put the antenna on the roof of my home to provide more of a 360 degree coverage without obstruction. Now, as mentioned earlier, you're also able to connect to the X-Range 2 locally on a number of ports, which provide the most common types of ADS-B data formats for third-party applications. Here, we're connected to port 3003 using PuTTY, and as you can see, all those Modus messages whizzing past. Now, the reason for this being available is in case you want to view your ADS-B data locally rather than through the internet. So for example, you could pipe this port 3003 data into an application such as virtual radar software, which will then provide a local web page for you to view the aircraft the X-Range 2 has received. Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of the X-Range 2. And in my opinion, this has got to be the most easiest setup I've ever done of an ADS-B receiver. Now, I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can purchase this from Amazon. And if you already own one of these, I'll be interested to know your experience with it, how well you get on with it and how easy it was for you to set up. So, so leave a message down in the comments below and I'll be interested to read them. Massive thank you to all my patrons and current subscriptions. And until the next video, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.